Interior. Pastor Barton's car. Night. Michelle stares out her front seat passenger's side window. Blank look on her face. Her father drives. There's an awkward silence, only the sound of the car's windshield wipers and rain hitting the windshield hurt. Finally, Pastor Barton ends the silence. I'm trying to understand what's going on, Michelle. No reaction. Why did you feel the need to go to the crime scene? Still no reaction. I know we have drifted apart these little past few years. I'm still trying to understand why. As if slapped in the face, Michelle's head swivels, eyes angry. They stare at each other. The stare down ends when her father turns his attention back to driving. Michelle turns away, looking out her window at the rain pelting the car. You seriously don't know the answer to that? Maybe you should ask your God for the answer. Her father looks uncomfortable as he continues to drive. Interior, Michelle Barton's bedroom night. Michelle sits on her bed twirling her hair nervously with one hand as she holds her cell phone to her ear with the other. Michelle? Hi. Are you okay? Michelle clears her throat. I'm okay. What happened? The story is all over the news. Michelle says nothing, twirling her hair faster. Are you the mystery person they're talking about? Her eyes close, stops twirling her hair, her hand going to her forehead. Michelle? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. What happened? Why did you have me drive you there? Talk to me, please. Michelle sighs, removes her hand from her forehead, opens her eyes. She looks very sad. I don't know. She grows quiet. Interior. Rick's bedroom. Same time. Rick sits on his bed, looking very concerned. Tell me, Michelle, you can trust me. He hears her sigh, then more silence. Michelle! Remember our conversation today? Yes. What? I'm paying for someone else's sin. Rick stands up, looks confused. What? Why? Who, Michelle? I don't understand. He can hear her starting to cry. Michelle, please, talk to me. Interior, Michelle Barton's bedroom, same time. Michelle is now laying on her bed in a fetal position. Rick. I want to thank you for today. It was very important to feel close to someone, and and I want to thank you for taking me to the crime scene. I hope you didn't get in any trouble with your parents. Interior, Rick's bedroom, same time. I'm not in any trouble. Don't worry about me. And you don't have to thank me for today. It was very special for me, too. I really like you. He can hear Michelle sniffling. What do you mean you're paying for someone else's sin? I'm really tired. It's been a long day and I've been enough of a burden on you today. Burden? You haven't been... I really need to go. Thank you, Rex. I'll see you at school on Monday. Michelle! Wait! His phone goes dead. He stands looking confused. Concerned. Frustrated. Interior. Michelle Barton's bedroom. Same time. Michelle is seen pulling up the covers of her bed over her head while laying in a fetal position, weeping quietly. Interior, Michelle Barton's bedroom, morning. Michelle and Stephanie are sitting across from each other, cross-legged, talking. Stephanie's eyes are opened wide in disbelief. Holy shit, Michelle! Michelle uncomfortably nods her head yes. Is that why we went to that girl's viewing? Michelle again nods yes. But you couldn't go through with it because you were afraid? I was afraid it was real, like, that what I saw wasn't just me being drunk, angry, depressed. Michelle looks down at her hands. Stephanie does as well. I was also afraid that if it wasn't real, then it would mean I'm going crazy or already there. Michelle looks back up into Stephanie's eyes. Michelle, we already know you're crazy. <laughs> this causes a much-needed laugh between the two of them. Wow. Michelle just... Wow. Steph brings her eyes down to Michelle's hands. So you just reached out and touched both of their hands and saw how they died? Michelle nods yes. Sees Steph staring at her hands. Don't worry, Steph. Stephanie looks up, taking her eyes off Michelle's hands. You're safe. I can't see the future. So... Like all those times we've held hands before and, well, you know, since, you haven't 
see me dying? No, okay? Stephanie takes a deep breath, then reaches her right hand out and takes Michelle's right hand into it. Michelle looks up into Stephanie's eyes. See? Nothing. Stephanie releases her hand, first looking relieved, then pissed. Well, you know, at least you could have made up something good. Like you see me meeting Aaron Nola, having sex with him on CBP's pitching mound. Slut. They break into laughs. Oh. I appreciate you coming over, but I'm really exhausted, just mentally out of it. Stephanie gets off the bed as well. I'm sure you are. Steph walks over to Michelle's computer table and grabs her pocketbook. Turns back to Michelle, smiles. Two more weeks. Just two more weeks. Stephanie hugs Michelle. As the embrace ends, Michelle touches Steph's hand. Eyes flying wide open in horror. Oh shit. What? Michelle slowly brings her eyes to meet Steph's. The look of fear still in her eyes. What? This isn't funny. Chell, what did you see? lead singer from Nickelback, a sex tape. No one watches it. You end up being their roadie whore with Nickelback babies. Stephanie's fear is replaced by disgust. It's what? Just evil. Michelle starts grinning. Interior, church morning. Michelle sits in the front pew next to her mom. Pastor is walking to the pulpit to read his sermon. Detective Schmidt enters the church, sits in the last pew unnoticed. Forgiveness. Such a tricky word, and even trickier human condition. We find it easier to forgive celebrities we like, but we don't know personally. Michael Vick and what he did to those dogs. Mel Gibson and his anti-Semite rants. Singer Chris Brown beating his girlfriend. Donald Trump and everything he's done yet. His followers forgive, accept. But when it's a friend, spouse, a son, a daughter, a wife, or a father. He looks directly at Michelle, who turns away from him instantly. We find it much harder to forgive, to accept the faults of our loved ones. He continues to look at his daughter, who sits there. We see her fists clenching. The detective sees that Pastor Barton has focused his attention to his daughter, but cannot see her reaction. God gave his son's life for our sins. Jesus sacrificed his life to cast away our sins. We take solace in the knowledge that if we keep Jesus' love in our hearts, we will be forgiven. Pastor Barton turns his eyes away from Michelle whose face is red, breathing heavier. Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. We speak these words every Sunday, but are just... We speak these words Sunday, but are they just words? Taught to us at an early age, which we recite out of habit? If Jesus can forgive the sinner, and we know we're all sinners, each and every one of us. He turns his eyes back to Michelle's. This time she looks back at him, her eyes wide. Why do we find it so hard to forgive those we love when they may hurt us? Michelle breaks eye contact, stands, brushes past her mom, and exits the pew. She starts slowly down the aisle. Why is forgiveness so hard to give to ones we love? She begins walking very fast now. As she gets to the end of the aisle, she is startled to see Detective Schmidt standing in the last pew. Their eyes meet. The detective nods to her. He leaves the pew, puts his arm around Michelle, and the two leave. Pastor Barton stares from the pulpit.